Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about a gynecology topic called amenorrhea. Definition: Amenorrhea literally means absence of menstruation. It is a symptom and not a disease. So amenorrhea means absence of menstruation. Clinical types: They are physiologically and pathological. Physiological is further divided into primary and secondary. Primary physiological amenorrhea is before puberty. Secondary physiological amenorrhea is found during pregnancy, during lactation and following menopause. Following menopause there is complete cessation of menstruation that is amenorrhea. These are the physiological types primary and secondary. Primary will be found before the puberty and secondary during pregnancy, lactation and following menopause. Now we come to the pathological types. They are further classified into concealed and true or real. Concealed also known as cryptomenorrhea. It is divided into congenital cryptomenorrhea and acquired cryptomenorrhea. The real, true is further classified into primary and secondary. The pathological types of amenorrhea are concealed and real. Concealed also known as cryptomenorrhea. It could be congenital by birth or acquired. Real or true is further primary amenorrhea and secondary amenorrhea. During lactation, so the woman during lactation has amenorrhea. The reason for this is high level of prolactin. It is inhibiting the ovarian response to FSH. No follicular growth. Hypoestrogenic state and no menstruation. So guys you can see here generally what happens. The GnRH will act First, the hypothalamus is going to release gonadotrophin releasing hormone. It is going to act on the anterior pituitary and release LH and FSH. These hormones will act on the ovary causing the growth of primary follicle into a mature graphene follicle. This mature graphene follicle releases estrogen. Here, in during the breastfeeding, that is during the lactation, what happens? During lactation, there is the ovaries do not respond to FSH. They do not respond. So the follicular growth, the growth, the growth is also inhibited. And the estrogen levels, this is going to, the graphene follicle is going to release the estrogen. So estrogen, there is hypoestrogenic state resulting in no menstruation. If the patient does not breastfeed her baby, the Menstruation will return by 6th week following delivery in about 40% and by 12th week in 80% of the cases. So they are saying if the, if the person is not breastfeeding her baby, then the menstruation will return by 6th that is 1 and half, half month following the delivery. In about 40% of the cases, it will return by 1 and half month and in about 80% of the cases, it will return by 3rd month. If she is not breastfeeding, if the person is breastfeeding, then the menstruation will be suspended in about 70% until the baby stops breastfeeding. So, if the woman is breastfeeding, what happens? The menstruation will be suspended. It will be stopped in 70% of the cases. Still, she is breastfeeding the baby. There won't be any menses. Hope uh, during lactation is clear. What you have to know that if she is not breastfeeding, it will return by one and half month or three months. One and half in 40 percent, three months in 80 percent. If she is breastfeeding until she stops breastfeeding, it will not return. In 70 percent of the cases, the menses won't return. Pathological. Under the pathological, the clinical types what we discussed. Now we are dealing with the pathological cryptomenorrhea. In cryptomenorrhea, there is periodic shedding of the endometrium and bleeding. But the menstrual blood fails to come out from the genital tract due to obstruction in the passage. Guys, what happens in cryptomenorrhea? The periodic shedding of the endometrium and the bleeding will occur. 
but it does not come out of the genital tract why it does not come out it is because there is some obstruction in the passage which is stopping the menstrual blood to flow out the causes are congenital and acquired the congenital causes for cryptomenorrhea are acquired imperforate hymen you see here acquired imperforate hymen what happens in this is the hymen will cover the whole opening of the vagina and it is preventing the blood menstrual blood to flow out then transverse vaginal septum again here the transverse vaginal septum again stopping the blood to flow out atresia atresia means absence or closure of upper third of vagina and cervix so the vagina and cervix there is atresia acquired causes stenosis of the cervix following amputation stenosis means narrowing amputation is the procedure where they cut out a part of it stenosis of the cervix you can see there is a closure of the cervix following the amputation deep cauterization and conization here there is a conical type so uh, cutting of the cervix deep cauterization and conization this conization and cauterizations these are the treatment procedures which are done in cases of cervical cancers what they do is they remove the part of the cervix due to the presence of the precancerous cells those tissues which contain the cancerous cells in the cone shaped if they are removed that is conization and cauterization when they do the deep conization and cauterization it can result in cryptomenorrhea secondary vaginal atresia following neglected and difficult vaginal delivery guys here vaginal atresia means absence of vagina or closure of the vagina so, uh, if it is present since birth it is primary now here it is secondary it is because it was normal the vagina the, it was normal later on it got uh, absent or it is closed following the neglected and difficult vaginal delivery it is a secondary event which took place in the life of a female then led to the vaginal atresia so it is known as secondary vaginal atresia hope it is clear what are the causes congenital could be acquired imperforate hymen transverse vaginal septum and atresia of upper third of vagina and cervix here the acquired are stenosis of the cervix following the amputation deep cauterization conization and secondary vaginal atresia following the neglected and difficult vaginal delivery now we move on to the clinical features the patient with the history of any of the etiological factors mentioned earlier complain of so the patient which are having any of those etiological factors what we read in the past two slides they will complain of they are going to come with the complaint of amenorrhea dated back from the event so a woman who underwent deep cauterization and uh, conization dated back from that event the next uh, from that month uh, she is having the absence of menses am for an example one event we are taking amenorrhea is dated back from the event there will be periodic pain lower abdomen so the patient will complain of absence of menstruation following that event and also she is going to say that she is having a periodic pain in her lower abdomen pelvic examination will reveal the offending lesions in the vagina or cervix the uterus is symmetrically enlarged you see the blood which is uh, shed uh, during each cycle it is not able to come out resulting in the accumulation of the blood in the uterus resulting in the symmetrical enlargement the uterus is going to be symmetrically enlarged now we come to the clinical features continuation there is hematocolpus hematocolpus it is a condition where there is vaginal retention of the menstrual blood you see here in the picture they have given there is vaginal retention of the menstrual blood it is associated with urinary problems to the extent of retention of urine guys you can see here hematocolpus this is the menstrual blood retention this is the imperforate hymen so the blood is not able to come out this is the urinary bladder behind this is the rectum 
here what's happening this enlarged thing is putting a pressure on the ureter so there is u uh, urethra and the ureter it is causing the retention of the urine then when you do the abdominal examination it will reveal a uniform globular mass in the hypogastrium the valval inspection will reveal the bulging hymen you can see the picture here there is a bulging hymen the patient typically presents this feature you, when you do the inspection abdo uh, valval inspection you see the bulging hymen because there is a blood accumulated here which is putting a pressure and the hymen is bulged rectal examination will confirm the fullness of the vagina and uterine mass so this is putting a pressure also on the rectum causing the fullness of the vagina and the uterine mass with this uh, we come to an end of cryptomenorrhea now we'll be dealing with the other type of the pathological that is amenorrhea primary and secondary primary amenorrhea definition a young girl who has not yet menstruated by her 16 years of age is having primary amenorrhea rather than delayed menarche so you can see 16 years of age which means the girl might be in her pu she has gone uh, entered college even then what hap what's happening she has not reached her menses so instead of saying that the girl is having delayed puberty you have to say delayed menarche menarche is the first menses instead of saying the delayed menarche it is termed as the girl is having primary amenorrhea that is primary absence of menstruation in the view of a lower mean age of menarche currently a cutoff value of 14 years in the absence of secondary sexual characters and 16 years regardless of the presence of secondary sexual characters is being considered so a mean age is calculated the lower mean age is calculated and there is a cutoff given that is 14 years for a girl in the in the absence of secondary sexual characters then it is termed as primary amenorrhea then if there is 16 years and she has not yet reached her first menses and there is a regardless of the presence of secondary sexual characters if she is aged 16 years whether the secondary sexual characters are present or absent it does not matter if she is not reached her menses then it is considered to be primary amenorrhea so you see 16 years of age the girl is in her pu college she is having uh, the secondary sexual characters there is breast development pubic hair and uh, uh, other things which are given in the picture if they are present yet she has not reached a menses even then it is considered to be primary amenorrhea if the secondary sexual characters are also absent and her uh, menarche is also not reached then that is also considered as primary amenorrhea if she is 16 years of age hope it is clear the causes are the causes of primary amenorrhea are grouped as hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. The causes have been grouped into various types. First, we'll be dealing with hypogonadotrophic, which means uh, the gonadotrophin hormone. It is a uh, low hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, underdevelopment of the gonads. Hypo, hypo, both the mm, hormone as well as the gonads, there is some defect. Hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. There is delayed puberty, delayed GnRH pulse reactivation. Guys, uh, the pulse, GnRH pulse reactivation, it is very necessary. The pulse reactivation, it is a critical uh, thing which is required for the maintenance of the puberty. To reach the puberty, the uh, the, uh, the GnRH uh, pulse, the frequency and the amplitude, it is uh, very required for the normal GnRH pulse. When the, there is a delayed pulse reactivation, you can see the neurons here. If there is some delayed reactivation, it can result in delayed puberty. Hypothalamic and pituitary dysfunction. You can see in the picture here, the hypothalamus and the pituitary. If there is some dysfunction due to stress, weight loss, excessive exercise, anorexia nervosa, chronic disease, tuberculosis. So, there is a defect to the hypothalamus and pituitary. There is some dysfunction resulting in GnRH deficiency. In which conditions there might be some uh, dysfunction to the hypothalamus and pituitary? In cases of stress, weight loss, excessive exercise, anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa, it is an eating disorder where the person goes self-starvation. 
she is very obsessed about the intake of her calories there is anorexia nervosa and chronic diseases such as tuberculosis all these conditions are going to cause the hypothalamic and pituitary dysfunction resulting in the decreased gonadotrophin release then continuation kalman's syndrome kalman's syndrome inadequate gnrh pulse secretion reduced fsh and lh we saw in the previous uh, thing here this gnrh pulse it has to be activated for the normal gnrh release gonadotrophin release releasing hormone what happens there is inadequate gnrh pulse secretion so there is reduced fsh and lh when the gnrh is reduced then it will uh, uh, act uh, less on the pituitary gland then there won't be sufficient fsh and lh there is reduced fsh and lh from the pituitary resulting in kalman's syndrome what happens in kalman's syndrome there will be delayed puberty that is primary amenorrhea and there will be under development of neurons which will signal the hypothalamus to release the gnrh the main thing lies here the gnrh the uh, the neurons which are supplying the gnrh will be damaged in kalman syndrome so there won't be gnrh sufficient gnrh release as a result fsh also is going to be released and delayed puberty or primary amenorrhea central nervous system tumors such as craniopharyngioma craniopharyngioma it is a benign tumor which is located near the pituitary and uh, hypothalamus this craniopharyngioma the benign tumor it is going to reduce the gnrh secretion as a result there will be reduced fsh and lh guys in the normal conditions what happens this is the hypothalamus it is going to release the gonadotrophin releasing hormone this will act on the anterior pituitary the anterior pituitary is going to release fsh and lh which acts on the ovaries resulting in the normal menstruation there is normal menstruation here in kalman's syndrome there will be inadequate pulse secretion reduced fsh lh in central nervous system tumor such as if there is a craniopharyngioma which is located near the hypothalamus and the pituitary this is also going to reduce the gnrh reduce fsh resulting in amenorrhea hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism now we are uh, we are done with hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism there is delayed puberty delayed gnrh pulse reactivation there is hypothalamic and pituitary dysfunction kalman's syndrome central nervous system tumors in these conditions what happens there will be hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism now we come to the hypergonadotrophic hypergonadism so the gnrh releases normal hypergonadotrophic whereas whereas the gonads the gonads the they are hypogonadism they are not responding well primary ovarian failure resistant ovarian syndrome resistant ovarian syndrome it occurs when there is a disturbance in the receptors in ovarian follicle you see guys normally what happens you need to know the normal thing to understand the abnormal thing what's happening the normal ovary it is going to the fsh is going to cause the growth of the primordial follicle into primary preantral small antral large antral preovulatory follicle graafian follicle rupture then there will be corpus luteum whereas in premature uh, ovarian uh, insufficiency that is premature ovarian failure the oocyte the number of the follicles are exhausted there is no maturation of the follicle there is resistant ovarian syndrome it is because there is the disturbance in the receptors of the ovarian follicle these receptors are not taking the fsh and lh even though the secretion is normal the receptors of the ovarian follicle are damaged resulting in primary amenorrhea then there is another thing called galactosemia due to premature ovarian failure we see the galactose have been implicated to cause a toxic damage to the ovaries so due, uh, this results in the premature ovarian failure you see premature ovarian failure the normal ovaries they will the, the functioning ovary will produce the ovum whereas in the premature ovarian failure it is non functioning ovary no ovum is produced so the ovaries are non functional in premature ovarian failure 
so in hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism you need to know that the problem lies in the ovaries not in the GnRH it is in the ovaries hence it is hypogonadism primary ovarian failure resistant ovarian syndrome galactosemia due to the premature ovarian failure whereas here we compare the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism both the delayed GnRH pulse even the GnRH there is a problem delayed GnRH pulse the pituitary and hypothalamus dysfunction is there now uh, there is Kalman syndrome and uh, central nervous system again the GnRH and the FSH there is a problem whereas in hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism the GnRH is normal more problem is in the gonads that is primary ovarian follicle resistant ovarian syndrome galactosemia due to premature ovarian failure hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism continuation the enzyme deficiency so there is an enzyme named 17 alpha hydroxylase if there is a deficiency of this enzyme known as 17 alpha hydroxylase it will it is characterized by whenever there is a deficiency of this enzyme it is characterized by decreased cortisol production and increased adrenocorticotropic hormone increased mineralocorticoids production there is hypertension with hypernatremia and hypokalemia so when the mineralocorticoids there is an increased production there is increased hypernatremia that is sodium content is increased normally what happens the mineralocorticoids they are responsible the mineralocorticoids they will secrete aldosterone it is respond the main mineralocorticoid is the aldosterone which is responsible to maintain the salt and water balance in a body so when there is increased increased adrenocorticotrophic hormone and increased mineralocorticoids there will be hypertension hypernatremia and hypokalemia so there is a disturbance in the salt and water balance the individual may be 46xx or 46xy with the primary amenorrhea and no secondary sexual characters you see in hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism the individual will be having primary amenorrhea and no secondary sexual characters the other causes are gonadotrophin receptor mutations rarely fsh or lh levels are high as the respective receptor may be absent or mutated so when there is a mutation of the gonadotrophin receptor then the fsh lh levels might be high but the receptor may be mutated so there is mutation of the receptor which is resulting in amenorrhea abnormal chromosomal pattern guys the other causes abnormal chromosomal pattern turner syndrome 45 x you can see the turner syndrome what happens there will be characteristic somatic abnormalities which are short stretcher shield chest widely apart nipples cubitus valgus then short neck absent secondary sex characters guys cubitus valgus it is a deformity where the forearm is angled out away from the body when the arm is extended you can see she is extending her arms the forearm is angled away from the body that is cubitus valgus so this is about turner syndrome various mosaic states 45x and 46xx pure gonadal dysgenesis 46xx and 46xy phenotypically female uh, pure gonadal dysgenesis phenotypically there will be female with three gonads the stretcher is average with some secondary sexual characters you can see some secondary sexual characters in her and there will be three gonads androgen insensitivity a syndrome. picture of the androgen insensitivity syndrome is given here there is normal breast development abnormal pubic hair you have to know in androgen insensitivity syndrome the breast development will be normal the pubic and uh, axillary hair will be scanty testicular feminization syndrome 46 xy partial deletions of x chromosome 46 xx so guys what are the abnormal chromosomal patterns 
Turner's syndrome, various mosaic states, pure gonadal dysgenesis, androgen insensitivity syndrome, and partial deletions of X chromosomes. In these cases, the patient will have primary amenorrhea. These chromosomal abnormal patterns are the causes for primary amenorrhea. Developmental defect of genital tract. If there is some defect in the development of genital tract in the womb, if there is imperforate hymen, we have already discussed the vagina. The hymen is going to completely close the opening of the vagina. Transverse vaginal septum, atresia, upper third of the vagina and cervix. So there is uh, absence of upper third of the vagina and cervix. It is being closed or absent. Complete absence of vagina, absence of uterus in MR. KH syndrome. Guys, you can see in the picture here, absence of the vagina. And then MRKH syndrome, absence of uterus in the MRKH syndrome. MRKH is the mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome. What happens here is the uh, external genitalia will be normal in the people who are suffering with this syndrome, whereas the uterus and the vagina will be absent. Guys, what happens in mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome? External genitalia, normal. Uterus vagina, absent. These are the developmental defects. Now we move on to the dysfunction of the thyroid and adrenal cortex resulting in primary amenorrhea. It leads to two conditions, adrenogenital syndrome and cretinism. The adrenogenital syndrome, what happens? There will be enlarged clitoris and fused labia minora in adrenogenital syndrome. And cretinism, the typical picture of a girl suffering with cretinism is given here. Next, we move on to the causes. They are metabolic disorders such as juvenile diabetes resulting in primary amenorrhea. Systemic illnesses such as malnutrition, anemia, weight loss and tuberculosis. So, if the girl is suffering with malnutrition, anemia, weight loss and tuberculosis, she might also end up in having primary amenorrhea. Unresponsive endometrium, congenital, uterine synche. Uterine synche, it is also popularly known as Asherman's syndrome. If there are pelvic adhesions which are uh, resulting in primary amenorrhea, then it is known as uterine synche, unresponsive endometrium. Then the endometrium becomes unresponsive, so the menstruation does not occur. Diagnosis of primary amenorrhea. Diagnosis of primary amenorrhea based on the clinical examination. So far we have discussed about uh, so many things. Now based on the clinical examination we are going to diagnose each of the condition. Physical appearance that is the secondary sexual characters and the stature. We look into the external genitalia, internal genitalia, these three things and considering them we are going to give the probable diagnosis in this slide. First, we'll start with the no if the patient is having a normal breast development. If the patient is having normal breast development, normal sexual hair, average stature. So, all the things externally, they are normal. The breast development, sexual hair, normal, stature is average. Now, we see the external genitalia is also normal. Whereas, the internal genitalia, there is absence of vagina and absent uterus. So, you diagnose it to be Mullerian agenesis or mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome. Guys, I just told you in the previous slide what happens in uh, mayer rokitansky kuster hauser syndrome, MRKH. The external genitalia will be normal, whereas the internal genitalia, there will be absence of vagina and uterus. Then, the breast development is normal, sexual hair will be normal and average stretcher. Now, we move on. If they are having a normal breast development, normal sexual hair and average stature, do is the same thing. You have to repeat the same things here. If the normal breast development, normal sexual hair and average stature, the external genitalia normal, internal genitalia normal, then it is unresponsive endometrium. Everything is normal, yet the patient is having primary amenorrhea. The diagnosis will be unresponsive endometrium. There might be receptor defect or uterine synche. Now, the third thing is if there is a poor breast development, scanty pubic hair, average stature, if there is, the breast development is poor. The pu pubic hair is scanty and the stature is average. 
if the external genitalia is underdeveloped internal genitalia is underdeveloped then it is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism everything there is a problem here problem here problem here problem externally the physical appearance poor breast development poor pubic hair stretcher is normal average and a, as stretcher is also average the external genitalia is underdeveloped internal genitalia underdeveloped vaginal rugosity is absent then you have to diagnose it to be hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism if everything is same you see uh, the external genitalia again underdeveloped internal genitalia underdeveloped only thing if the girl is tall and lanky then you have to diagnose it to be primary ovarian failure so guys if it is a tall and lanky girl underdeveloped external genitalia underdeveloped internal genitalia then you have to say it is primary ovarian failure if the girl is average stature underdeveloped external genitalia underdeveloped internal genitalia then you have to say it is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism next we move on to turner syndrome in turner syndrome there will be poor secondary sexual characters the stature will be short webbing of the neck and cubitus valgus present congenital malformations of cardiac renal and great vessels coarctation of the aorta you can see the picture here the girl is having poor secondary the breast is not well developed the women she is actually a woman not a girl the secondary sexual characters so that is the breast is poorly developed the stretcher is short webbing of the neck cubitus valgus will be present that is a uh, cubitus valgus there is a deformity where the forearm is going to be angled and it is away from the body when she is extending her arms the forearm is away from the body cubitus valgus is present the, there will be congenital malformations of the great vessels then you have to uh, the then you move on to the external genitalia there will be underdeveloped internal genitalia underdeveloped there will be streak gonads then it is turner syndrome guys will summarize in mayer rockettansi kusterhaster syndrome what happens the external genitalia will be normal internal genitalia vagina uterus will be absent the rest things breast development sexual hair stature will be average now we move on to the next thing unresponsive endometrium what happens everything is going to be normal then you have to consider to be unresponsive endometrium receptor defect will be there then we read about hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism everything will be in defect the breast development scanty pubic hair average stature external genitalia underdeveloped internal genitalia underdeveloped it is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism then primary ovarian failure you see the girl will be tall and lanky external and internal genitalia will be underdeveloped tall and lanky girl but the external internal genitalia will be underdeveloped then we read about the turner syndrome in detail the physical uh, uh, appearance how it is going to be short nature a uh, short stature webbing of the neck will be there cubitus valgus then this when you ask her to stand uh, her extend the arms there will be angulation of the forearm cubitus valgus will be there congenital malformations external internal genitalia is also going to be underdeveloped then it is turner syndrome last it is pure gonadal dysgenesis what happens phenotypically the girl, it is a female of average height delayed secondary sexual characters so the secondary sexual characters that is the breast development and the pubic hair is delayed external genitalia is normal internal genitalia there is bilateral streak gonads so the problem is in the internal genitalia there are streak gonads and if there is having and they are having delayed secondary sexual characters there is pure gonadal dysgenesis in pure gonadal dysgenesis internal genitalia there will be bilateral streak gonads if the external appearance if they are having a normal breast development without areolar pigmentation so the uh, the nipples the areola it is not pigmented but the breast development is good they are having scanty pubic and axillary hair or the pubic and axillary hair is absent they are having an average stature the external genitalia short blind vagina internal genitalia labial or inguinal gonads then guys you can make a guess here i have already told in some condition what happens there will be short blind vagina absence of uterus 
but the breast development will be good we saw a picture of a woman it is androgen insensitivity syndrome i'll show you the picture of a labial and inguinal gonads you can see here the person is having a short blind vagina along with the bilateral labial gonads that is testes they are having the bilateral gonads testes are present with a short blind vagina testicular feminization bilateral inguinal gonads with a short and a blind vagina this condition it is androgen insensitivity syndrome where the breast development will be normal pubic axillary hair will be scanty or absent average is stretcher external appearance will be fine but when you see the external genitalia there will be labial or uh, short blind vagina and absence of uterus in the internal there will be labial or inguinal gonads now we move on to the androgenital syndrome late onset what happens in androgenital syndrome normal phenotypical female of average stature internal genitalia there will be labial fusion and enlargement of clitoris whereas the external genitalia will be normal so guys in androgenital syndrome the external genitalia will be normal whereas the the um, internal genitalia there will be fusion of the labia and enlargement of clitoris now we move on to cretinism due to hypothyroidism the features of hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism that is the short stretcher in cretinism mental retardation obesity retina retinitis pigmentosa retinitis pigmentosa where there is a damage to the retina external genitalia underdeveloped internal genitalia underdeveloped then it is hypothalamo pituitary dysfunction in rare conditions kalman's syndrome we have already discussed in kalman's syndrome there will be under development of the neurons which will supply the hypothalamus resulting in primary amenorrhea prader labhart will syndrome so in prader labhart willy syndrome it is a syndrome where there is delayed puberty short stretcher obesity intellectual disability will be there they also present the features of cretinism lorenz moon bardet beal syndrome so in lorenz moon bardet beal syndrome lmbbs popularly again they will also have the features of short stretcher mental retardation obesity and retinitis pigmentosa if the patient comes with the features of short stretcher mentally retarded she is obese retinitis pigmentosa is found both her internal genitalia external genitalia is underdeveloped then you can consider it to be you can diagnose it to be cretinism due to hypothyroidism or hypothalamo hypothalamo pituitary dysfunction in rare conditions kalman syndrome prader labhart willy syndrome lorenz moon bardet beal syndrome With this, we come to an end of the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea based on the clinical examination.